Imagine the sun, that radiant sphere of fire that lights up our days and which sits at the heart of our solar system, shrunk down to the size of a single grain of sand. This is not just any sun we're talking about, but that celestial entity that's 4.6 billion years old, with a mass so colossal, a diameter so huge and sitting at a staggering 93 million miles away from our beloved Earth. Picture that, reduced to the size of a tiny piece of sand, a mere half millimeter in diameter. Now what would that make our planet Earth? It would be smaller than a red blood cell, and we humans, we'd be smaller than an atom. The distances within our solar system, too, would change. The distance between the Earth and the Sun, for example, would be about the size of a, well, let's just say, not as huge as you'd think. And as for our stellar neighbors and other galaxies, the closest star to the Sun, Proxima Centauri, would be a certain distance away. The Milky Way galaxy, home to a staggering 400 billion stars, would measure up to a particular size. To travel from the Milky Way to Andromeda, the largest galaxy in our local group, we'd have to cover a certain incredible distance. But the most mind-boggling part of it all is... Uh, you'll find out soon enough. Hold on to your seats, folks, because the scale of the universe is about to get very real, in a very small way. What's up, my amazing and curious folks? Ready to unravel mysteries together? I'm your host, Caesar. And here with me is the ever-lively and insightful Sonia, ready to dive into the depths of the cosmos with us. Hey there, everyone. Excited to be here. Remember, folks, if you enjoy these deep dives into the mysteries of the universe, take a moment to subscribe to our podcast and hit that bell icon so you never miss an episode. We're here every day, unraveling the wonders of the world, one curiosity at a time. Stay tuned, because today's subject is a real mind-bender. So folks, let's dive into this a little further. When we think about cosmic scales, it's almost ungraspable how incredibly large these are from our human perspective. To give you an idea, an average human is a little less than two meters in height, but our planet Earth is more than 12 million meters in diameter. That's quite a leap, isn't it? Certainly is. I mean, just thinking about those numbers is mind blowing. Exactly. And that's just our planet. Our sun, the star at the center of our solar system, is even larger at around 1.4 billion meters across, and it's incredibly distant as well, sitting some 150 billion meters away from us. And even those numbers, as grand as they may seem, are small when you consider what lies beyond our inner solar system. Absolutely. Neptune, the farthest planet from the sun in our solar system, is more than 4 trillion meters away. Even further away is our neighboring star, Proxima Centauri, which sits at a staggering distance of approximately 40 trillion kilometers. And that's not even getting into the scale of our own galaxy, the Milky Way, which stretches more than 100,000 light years across. That's just, wow, it's hard to even imagine. It truly is. And we've not even gone beyond our own galaxy yet. The observable universe is stretched across trillions of other galaxies. So you can see why it's incredibly hard to fathom these cosmic scales. But let's try shrinking down these scales using an analogy, something a little more familiar to us. So we're imagining the sun as a grain of sand, right? Exactly. If the universe were shrunk down so that the sun was a grain of sand, with the core of a globular cluster, just 22,000 light years away in our own Milky Way, the scene would look, well, you'll find out soon enough. So. If we shrink down the sun to the size of a grain of sand, we're talking about a change in scale by around a factor of a trillion. Grains of sand range from under 100 microns up to about two millimeters in size. So we're basically saying that the sun has now turned into a tiny particle that can barely be seen by the naked eye? That's right. But remember, not all stars and grains of sand are the same. For instance, the smallest, lowest mass stars are red dwarfs, which are around 7.5 to 8% the mass of the Sun. Isn't that almost as small as the planet Jupiter? Yes, in fact, the smallest known red dwarf is just 20% larger than Jupiter, which is quite fascinating. But on the other end, stars can be much more massive and larger than our Sun. Oh really? How big are we talking about? The most massive star known is R136A1, found in the Tarantula Nebula 
This star is 260 times the mass of the sun. That's a category of stars called blue supergiants. And these blue supergiants, how big are they compared to the sun? Even though they're large in terms of physical size, they only reach up to about 25 times the sun's diameter. Yet the largest known stars are the red supergiant stars, and they can be several hundred or even up to around 1,000 times the size of the sun. That's just mind-boggling. It really puts things into perspective. Now, as we've mentioned, just like grains of sand, stars also come in a variety of sizes. If we use the smallest sand grain to represent the smallest star, this would cause our sun to come out at around 0.5 millimeters in diameter as a grain of sand. That's precisely 2.8 trillion times smaller than its actual physical size. So if we're shrinking the sun down to these small scales, we'd also have to imagine the rest of the universe scaled down as well, right? Absolutely. Everything would have to be in the same proportion as we scaled down the sun. Now, if the sun were 0.5 millimeters in diameter, that would make planet Earth about 4.6 microns across. For comparison, that's a little bit smaller than a red blood cell, but a little bit larger than a single bacterium. Wait, so how small would that make us humans? Well, in this scale, a full-grown human would be around 600 femtometers in size. That's about the same size as 40 uranium nuclei lined up end-to-end -end against one another. It's almost impossible to truly imagine how tiny that is. Indeed. And just to add to that, the topmost bone of your thumb, known as the distal phalanx, would correspond to about 1.7 femtometers in size. That's roughly the size of a single proton. So yes, our whole planet and everything on it would indeed be minuscule. Now, if the sun were a grain of sand, the scale of the solar system would also change significantly. Earth's orbital distance around the sun is about 150 million kilometers. But in our sand grain analogy, that would shrink to just about 5.3 centimeters, or a little more than two inches. That's hard to imagine. Can you give an example? Let's say you're holding a grain of sand between your thumb and index finger. In this scenario, the Earth would be a microscopic particle orbiting around two inches away from your fingers. Now Jupiter, our largest planet, would be just smaller than a grain of sand and would be about 28 centimeters, or nearly a foot, away from your fingers. And what about the farthest planet in our solar system? Neptune would be about a third the size of Jupiter, but its orbit would be 1.6 meters wide. That's about the height of an average adult. Our Kuiper belt would stretch out to about 2.4 meters, or almost 8 feet. And the nearest stars, how far would they be? Proxima Centauri, the closest star, would be about 14 kilometers away and would be among the smallest grains of sand that wouldn't be downgraded to be classified as silt. It's a remarkable scale to consider. Now, when we talk about the scale of our Milky Way galaxy, it's important to remember that it's home to an estimated 400 billion stars. If we continue with our analogy, we would have 400 billion grains of sand distributed in a spiral-lined disk. You know, this reminds me of a childhood memory. I used to visit the beach with my family every summer. One of my favorite activities was to scoop up handfuls of sand and let it trickle through my fingers. Trying to count the grains was an impossible task, yet I found the attempt mesmerizing. Somehow, it made me feel connected to something much larger, much like our discussion about the stars in our galaxy. That's a beautiful memory and quite fitting. In the context of our analogy, if we were to distribute those 400 billion grains of sand across our Milky Way, we would need to cover around four followed by 23 zeros cubic meters of volume. Just to give you an idea, the diameter of the Milky Way would then be about 300,000 kilometers or just slightly less than the distance from the Earth to the Moon. That's a powerful image, isn't it? We're like tiny grains of sand in an immense cosmic beach. Yet, each grain, each star, including our Sun, holds its unique place in the vastness. It makes me appreciate the incredible scale of our universe and our place within it. On Earth, sand grains are usually in contact with at least one other grain. But in space, if we represent the Sun as a grain of sand, the average distance between these tiny specks would actually be measured in kilometers. 
that's quite a departure from our earlier picture of grains of sand closely packed together on a beach. So the stars in our universe are relatively isolated? Exactly. Just as sand is found where the conditions are right, stars are mostly found where large collections of matter have gathered together, in galaxies to be precise. About a hundred years ago, we were still discovering that the spirals and ellipticals we saw in the night sky were galaxies themselves. At that time, they were thought of as island universes. Fascinating. So these galaxies, or cosmic beaches as we've been calling them, are scattered across the vast expanse of the universe? Precisely. These galaxies can cluster and even merge together, but they're generally separated by millions of light years. For instance, if we consider the Andromeda and the Milky Way, the two largest and most star-rich galaxies in the local group, the distance between them is quite staggering. If we continue with our sand analogy, we can extend it a bit further. The distance to the next nearest large galaxies, like Bode's galaxy and the Cigar galaxy, if we shrank all the stars to grains of sand, would be about 36 million kilometers away from us. They are only separated from one another by around 400,000 kilometers, which is similar to the Earth-Moon distance. This is an example of galaxies that are closely grouped and on the path towards merging. So this is an example of galaxies coming together despite those vast cosmic distances we've been discussing. Absolutely. Now consider the Virgo cluster of galaxies, the largest rich cluster of galaxies close to us. It would be around 150 million kilometers away, containing over a thousand large galaxies within a sphere about 15 million kilometers in size. So there are these pockets where galaxies are closely grouped together despite the overall vastness and emptiness of space. Exactly. Now if we wanted to take a journey to the edge of the observable universe, with its trillions upon trillions of island universes or galaxies, we'd have to venture out a little over 100 billion kilometers, about the equivalent of the distance that Sedna, a body within our solar system, will reach at its farthest point from the Sun. It's mind-boggling to think that the observable universe, if we keep to our grain of sand analogy, would only be a little over 100 billion kilometers in radius, but it would contain around two sextillion grains of sand or stars strewn across that incredible volume. That really puts the vastness and yet the rarity of stars within the universe into perspective, doesn't it? The vastness of our universe is truly breathtaking, but perhaps even more striking is how empty it really is. If we take 300 times the number of grains of sand on Earth and scatter them across a sphere nearly a thousand times the Earth-Sun distance in radius, we get an idea of the sparsity of stars in our universe. That's a lot of empty space. Indeed, it is. If we imagine that each grain of sand represents a star and that sphere represents the volume of the observable universe, we begin to realize just how isolated these stars are. If the sun were a grain of sand, a volume of space the size of the entire Earth would contain fewer than one billion grains of sand within it. The universe, despite the unimaginable numbers of stars and galaxies it contains, is incredibly sparse. It's fascinating to think about, isn't it? It really puts into perspective just how grand and yet how empty our universe truly is. Looking back at our journey today, we've truly traversed the expanse of the universe, all while using the familiar grain of sand as our guide. We started with our solar system, shrunk down until the sun was but a tiny speck and Earth even smaller. We flew past sand grain-sized Proxima Centauri, 14 kilometers away, and then to the edges of our Milky Way galaxy, which spread out to be 300,000 kilometers across. We then visited the infamous Andromeda Galaxy, a staggering 7.5 million kilometers away, and even ventured to the edge of the observable universe, over 100 billion kilometers distant. And in doing so, we've learned an astonishing reality. Despite the unimaginable numbers of stars and galaxies, our universe is incredibly sparse. It's a bit like finding out your house isn't just spacious, it's virtually empty. Absolutely. And there you have it, folks. A trip through our vast yet incredibly sparse universe. Like grains of sand scattered across an infinite beach, each star in our universe has its own unique story. Thank you for joining us on this cosmic journey. If you've enjoyed this trip, do us a favor, will you? 
blast that like button, drop us a comment, and share this episode with your friends. Your support means the world to us. And remember, each grain of sand under your feet could represent a star in our universe. Puts your next beach visit in a whole new perspective, doesn't it? I'll say, thanks for tuning in, everyone. Until next time, keep looking up. Goodbye, and keep those minds curious. Our cosmic journey today was inspired by the article, Ask Ethan, What If the Sun Were a Grain of Sand? Written by Ethan Siegel and published on the 5th of January, 2024 on the Big Think website. The full URL will be in the description if you'd like to dive deeper into this fascinating topic. Now, it's time for me to blast off. 